Um, so thank you again, um, take two. Uh, I'm, it's a pleasure to present these data on behalf of Anthony, who actually did this analysis. Um, so I'm going to talk about prevalence and factors associated with frailty and pre-frailty. So I'm a geriatrician. I'm obviously interested in frailty. It's a common um, phenotype that I recognize. I have no conflicts of interest. This, fund, this, the, this project is funded by the Wellcome Trust. So the reason for looking at frailty is because we know that the population distribution for people living with HIV has shifted over the last 20 years. Um, the population is now a much older population. And if you look to the future, the population pyramid is predicted to change. The population living with HIV is um, expected to become much older. And we know um, that aging is associated with frailty. So. What I mean by frailty is this, this concept of moving from being robust, which is how I would describe myself, to being pre-frail, to being frail, and then to being disabled. And um, this is characterized by a reduced resilience to a stressor. So a stressor, let's call it pneumonia or some intercurrent infection. And the recovery is delayed and one never gets quite back to where you were before you had that illness until you have declined to the point of frailty. So in this study, we aim to determine the prevalence of frailty in older adults living with and without HIV, the association between HIV and frailty, factors associated with frailty in people living with HIV, and then to determine the association between frailty and health-related quality of life. So the study was embedded in a larger study which I, I lead across uh, the Gambia, Zimbabwe and South Africa. Um, but for the purposes of this analysis, we're focusing on Zimbabwe and just women. Um, so we aim to recruit 504 women into three age strata, 40 to 54, 55 to 70, 70 plus. And we did that by using GIS mapping of suburbs in Harare and then randomly selecting blocks and then household sampling to enumerate everybody living within a household. And then those who were of the, the right sex and age group were invited to take part. And then those individuals came up to Sally Mugabe Hospital for a research assessment. And so for the purposes of frailty, I mean, they had a very comprehensive assessment, as you might imagine, but I'm going to describe here the, the variables pertinent to this analysis. So we used the freed frailty definition, um, and that's, that uses five things to define frailty. So with a red cap questionnaire, we asked about unintentional weight loss, physical exhaustion, low levels of physical activity using the International Physical Activity Questionnaire. We measured grip strength using the JMAR dynamometer, and we did a four meter walk to test gait speed. And so you define frailty if you are low in three out of those five things. And then people are pre-frail if, if you have a deficit in one or two of those um, elements. And you're not frail or you're robust if you, if, if you have normal in all of those five things. We assessed um, other components such as socioeconomic data, anthropometry. In anybody who wasn't established to have a diagnosis of HIV, we offered them a test. And in anybody who um, was established to have HIV, we measured viral load. So in terms of the statistical methods, uh, prevalence of frailty stratified by age group shown as N in percentages. We use logistic regression to look at the association between HIV and frailty and factors associated with frailty. And then linear regression to look at the association between frailty and quantitative health related quality of life. So in terms of the HIV characteristics of this population, we identified a prevalence of 21.6% of HIV. And those who were living with HIV were on average 54 years old and they'd been living with HIV for on average 10 years. 8.3% were newly diagnosed, and they on average were 58 years old, but the youngest was 40, and the oldest new diagnosis was in an 83-year-old woman. So in terms of our 95, 95, 95 targets, 91.4% living with HIV knew about their status, 97% diagnosed with HIV were on ART, and 87.1% on ART were virally suppressed based on less than 50 copies. So here are the population characteristics. Both of those 116 individuals who are living with HIV together with um, a larger group who were HIV negative. And what you can see here is that actually um, there were more people who were older 
who were HIV negative than in the, in the population living with HIV. And you can also see in those women who were living with HIV, they were more commonly both obese and underweight than um, the HIV negative group. You can see cardiometabolic diseases were pretty common. More than half of the women had either hypertension, diabetes, cardiovascular disease. And you can also see that um, 11% of those living with HIV had had prior tuberculosis, and vision and hearing impairments were common, as you might expect in an older population. When we look at those five components that constitute frailty, in the three different age strata, in women with and without HIV, so HIV negative uh, in the red and those with HIV in the blue, we actually saw not a lot of difference in terms of these five different components of frailty. So when you put that together, we didn't see a difference in the prevalence of frailty by HIV status in any of these three age groups. But if you look at the little um, uh, table, what we did see was a, a tendency towards a larger proportion of women who were HIV negative being frail, who of course were the population who were older. So in our age-adjusted analyses, um, we were keen to, well, we were keen to age adjust. And in these age adjusted analyses, we saw that women who had had prior tuberculosis had more than fourfold the odds of being found to be frail. And then we also saw that those women who um, had been on ART for longer had reduced odds of frailty. So that was taking into account, having adjusted also for the years lived with HIV. So for each five years established on ART, having taken into account the years lived with HIV, um, there was more than half, uh, half the odds of actually being frail. So it appeared that ART duration was protective against frailty. And then in terms of our last objective, frailty was associated with poorer health-related quality of life, but it was so in women with and without HIV. So to conclude, in women who were often virally suppressed in this population, HIV was not associated with frailty. And after taking account of the number of years lived with HIV, then longer-term use of ART was associated with lower odds of frailty. Prior tuberculosis was associated with a fourfold increased odds of frailty, and health-related quality of life was lower in those women who were frail. So together, the results suggest that early ART initiation, good viral suppression, and potentially tuberculosis prevention and management may protect against frailty in women in Zimbabwe. And with that, I would like to thank the collaborative team. Thank you.